Greetings and hello. I know that this is an impromptu broadcast and as a result I would like to uh, allow those of you who are not normally here to have an opportunity to join because this is important as you can see from the topic it is getting worse daily as is expected if you do not mind please let me know whether you can see clearly and you can hear clearly uh, I have a very long day ahead of me um, my brothers and my sisters fellow Guyanese we are as I would have said to you in crisis so you're not approaching a crisis I said this to you months ago that we are in a serious almost catastrophic situation in this country I hope that you can hear me clearly I hope that you can see clearly and it is my hope that you're willing to share this broadcast with someone from the PPP Civic who has been left with a modicum of reasoning Thank you, Apostle Arpa, for the feedback. Who has been left with some degree of basic human reasoning. This is not about even common sense anymore. This is about somebody being brave enough from the PPP Civic Camp to say that they are prepared to function according to simple regard and respect for people who even if they, if it's not this the the, the the not the opposition as they would say they their supporters this has gone beyond the realm of even basic common sense now and so with that in mind i i know that i did not plan to be here um, but i have to it's imperative that I would have I, I, I do this broadcast this evening uh, because tomorrow I'm certain as you are aware from the prefect broadcast that because I'm in Linden I did not have opportunities to write for permission to use which is interesting to me a speaker in public uh, I would not make this a matter in which I have a consistent issue with the Guyana police force because it defeats the purpose my issue is not with the Guyana police force and therefore I shall not seek to have a deliberate cause to have a problem with the Guyana police force. I have no problem with the Guyana police force. I have an issue with the leaders of Guyana, particularly the PPP Civic Administration that is now saddled with the task of repairing, which they don't intend to do obviously, with some degree of humility, the trash that have caused us to inherit in terms of the COVID-19 situation. Now that you hear me clearly, would you be, please be kind enough to share the broadcast with someone so that the liberties that I have that are challenged at the moment that would soon hopefully be returned to me, which one of them would be for me to speak using the aid of an amplifier because I don't know some of you, my, I see my, my, my former vocal coach is still here or is on the broadcast, so I know that she would be hearing my voice is... Uh, already strained on my vocal cords but I'm trying my best I'll try to rest as well I know that she's hearing me so I, I'm unable to stand in public and scream because it's going to do harm to my vocal cords and I I, I don't I cannot stand and shout if traffic if the vehicles are passing and so on so what I would like to do is to say many things to you tonight that you may not be able to hear clearly when I'm saying them tomorrow because I have a phone before me speaking directly to uh, you on Facebook while I stand at the square of the revolution. I am not going to the square of the revolution because I'm a member of APNU AFC. The square of the revolution by name is a place that is known to have some degree of historic sentiments attached to it that represents the revolution of course in reference to slaves turning against their masters 
and it is most hypocritical if the PPP Civic are going to or would have an Emancipation Day. <laughs> there you are. I know you are cringing. If the PPP Civic on Emancipation Day were going to celebrate afro Guyanese and the struggle that we faced, and then you're going to, on another day, assume that we don't have the right to, in a modern society, as a people as a whole, we do not have the right to struggle against you if you feel that we're being oppressed by you, then you are nothing more than hypocrites or nothing less than hypocrites. Since you're here and you can hear me clearly, I listen to Newsroom, a broadcast, and it's on my page, in which Frank Anthony, note I'm not referring to him as Dr. Frank Anthony, Frank Anthony, the Minister of Health, or the person who's responsible for the well-being, the physical well-being of us as Guyanese. Good evening and shalom to all of you who are saints. Blessings. This man has in his utterance taken me to a place psychologically, taken me to a place emotionally that I am eagerly or I am hoping is not present on a long-term basis. When someone in the capacity of Frank Anthony, who has got on his shoulders the, the health and well-being of every Guyanese citizen, on his shoulders, when that very person would have, on July 31st, issued for the 1st of August to the 31st of August, an edict or an order that's been gazetted, and in that order, he would have said, in essence, that as of the 1st of August, every public transportation operator, every department or ministry in the public se sector, every private business owner, every Guyanese, good evening, shalom, must be vaccinated as long as you're above 18 and older or you must present to them and their various entities a PCR test that is done at your expense Frank Anthony as a Minister of Health was asked about the fact that public servants who happen to be persons like the police, the army, the soldiers, the nurses who would have slaved throughout the pandemic before these vaccines came to Guyana, the people who worked at the hospitals that you PPP Civic called heroes, the frontline workers that you tagged them to be, the people that you said that Valde Lawrence was not treating right in the pandemic. You see, I don't forget things, and that would be your issue with me. I hold you accountable to everything you say before you, you ascended upon David Granger's removing himself from this entire equation on the 2nd of August. Everything that you said, Every criticism that you would have raised against Walter Lawrence, the then Minister of Health, I took note of. Because I told you that your turn is coming to demonstrate to us that you can do better. I said on a public forum that if you do well, I will have no issue with complimenting you. Because I am not here to advance the cause of the APNU AFC. I will not be a supporter of the APNU AFC or the PPP Civic unless or until either of you get your act together to understand that you serve the people of Guyana in a genuine way. Which is why I made an announcement because I'm seeing that that is not happening. 
and as a result of that, the decision was made and is being toyed with, or not toyed with, but being examined carefully. Uh, Shalom Apostle, regarding my seeking to hold what is called public office so that I can deal with y'all in, in another way. You were very critical of how the nurses were being treated. You. And now it's your turn to treat them well. You were labeling them as heroes and you said that they deserve better. When they couldn't simply get the, uh, personal protective equipment, you said they were limited and all of that. Now it's your turn. Now it's your turn. And the same nurses that you've labeled to be heroes, you are now saying that they are villains in the context that if they are not vaccinated, they must find 20,000 Guyana dollars plus, or I'll quote Frank Anthony, 100 US dollars per PCR test. You are saying that the people who are heroes must now go into their pockets while they serve in the health sector. In case you do not realize, Frank Anthony, COVID-19 is a disease, and if it's a disease, then it means it is a responsibility of the health sector to cater to the, to the populace. You don't seem to understand. You don't seem to have the, the, the ability to grasp something that is so simple. If COVID-19 is a disease, then it falls under the, 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 the authority of, or the guidance of, or, the, or in the care of, or the parameter of the Ministry of Health which includes nurses. These nurses would have worked throughout the pandemic from the beginning without a vaccine. They put their lives on the line every day without a vaccine. I remember clearly when patient zero was there and everybody was saying it wasn't COVID, the nurses had to tend to the same person without a vaccine. Nurses and healthcare workers died because there was no proper and serious effort being made to protect them. You said that Valda Lawrence was responsible because she wasn't handling COVID-19 the way she should have handled it. Now because your government which was obviously in the election period totally supported by the private sector commission now, because the private sector commission wants to get business going on as usual, apparently, you have taken an approach that says that the same nurses, the same nurses who stood to protect even some of y'all when you were guardians of democracy and you contracted COVID, those same nurses are now being compelled to either comply with your provision and even the trainees, they must give themselves their bodies over to you for them to be vaccinated or they'll have to go into their pockets to pay for a PCR test that you said in the news would cost the government of Guyana actually you said taxpayers would have to pay 100 US dollars per, per COVID-19 PCR test Mr. Anthony, I am taking note of how quiet Mr. Barra Jaglio is and I understand his nature as a politician. And I will speak to that, hopefully, but I should speak to it now because I don't know what happened to me tomorrow. The fact that I'm, I'm not hearing much from Barra Jaglio, let me help you out with something. It could be very well, it could very well be the case that he can see what comes down the road. And as, is, as was the case in 2015, when the catastrophe of your defeat was experienced, he knew how to redeem himself in 2020. That's the person we're dealing with. It's apparent that maybe Barra Jaglio sees the direction which you headed, and he knows that when he is quiet and something untoward should occur in this country, he'll then come out and say, well, I, I really am not the person who did all of this, and he can seek to redeem your party from disastrous experiences because it is likely that your supporters are not going to be supporting you if you continue along this line you seem to forget who are the people that supported you i'm not one of them but i'm saying you seem to be forgetting that it was not just the, the private sector 
that voted for you to be where you are. It was not just the millionaires of Guyana who voted for you where you are. It was not just your rich cronies who voted for, to be, for you to be where you are. They may have funded your being where you are, but they couldn't vote. And I'm not seeing many statements from the vice president in regard, regarding what's happening in Guyana. But that aside, The fact that you as a minister in the government of Guyana can say that it will cost taxpayers 100 US dollars to do a PCR test to test let's just let's let's deal with the nurses part let's deal with the nurses please you're saying that it costs a hundred dollars US for every PCR test and the taxpayers, the nurses pay taxes, by the way, because Ashin Singh may have not spoken to you. The nurses of, of Guyana pay taxes. And you're saying to me that taxpayers, nurses who are paying taxes, doctors who are paying taxes, the cooks who are paying taxes, the cleaners who are paying taxes, you are saying to me that the, let me deal with the nurses and the doctors first. The people who are in the health sector in general, those who even work at your COVID-19 centers, who have pushed in the midst when there was no vaccine, who were working, you are saying to me that nurses who pay taxes, they are called taxpayers. You can't afford as a government to use their money to test them. I mean... I, I, is it possible for you to be able to think before you speak at this time in Guyana? Or is it that you feel, you feel now as if you are, you've been left on your own, you and Irfan Ali, to speak and, and other people are not supporting you as loudly as they're supposed to? Because I'm, I'm trying to honestly hear reason or rationalize, which I, I, I cannot do, but I'm trying my best to find a, a reason that could explain the asininity of your, of your, of your, of your comments. You are saying that a nurse who pays taxes who would be therefore be labeled a taxpayer that money the person's taxes you can't afford to test the individual with their own money that they contributed to, to the treasury is that what you're actually saying and is that what you expect any normal thinking guy needs to accept from you as being remotely rational The government of Guyana established testing centers. You said today that people will generally come to those centers when they have just about absolute certainty that they have got COVID-19. Wait. So nurses don't have the right while they're working in this environment to go to a testing center to be tested? According to you, you said no. Because taxpayers can't afford it. So what are the taxpayers talking about? Who are the taxpayers to which you're referring? Are you saying that nurses are not taxpayers, but the, the private sector commission who pays a hefty tax probably are the ones who you're speaking to here? I find it difficult to lay my head and sleep a person like you making such statements about people who serve this nation and put their lives on the line we didn't have a massive case in which nurses were resigning because they feared dying from COVID nurses remained on the job when there was no treatment that was certain for COVID-19, when there was no vaccine that was certain for COVID-19, none was even developed. Nurses did not resign en masse. They remained faithful to their calling. Doctors remained faithful. You deemed them heroes. And now you're saying that if they refuse to take the vaccines, the government, no, the taxpayers, who they happen to be, 
would not afford to pay or cannot afford to pay for them to be tested at the government testing centers? Are you understanding what you're saying? I am beginning to wonder, honestly wonder, whether the PPP Civic is seeking to cause some degree of civil unrest or a reaction from people in this country that can justify them exercising or utilizing the military or the army to cripple a person's right to oppose you. I am wondering, I'm not saying that's what you're doing, because the things that you are doing are causing me to have thoughts to the degree whereby I'm seeking to understand if there is more to this than what you're saying. Because what you are saying to us is obviously beyond any parameter of common sense. I say further, That you also are heard, I saw you actually in, a, in another clip, saying that a lot of people are talking about human rights, maybe I'm one of them because I know that you will come up with some subliminal statement after I speak, that many people are speaking about human rights, but if, and you're speaking to the person's right to choose what enters their body here, you're saying why should you in essence pay such attention to all this talk? And if the person's die, the person dies, then what human rights do they have? You are a minister of health and you can be that callous to say that because somebody says it is my human right, which it is according to the United Nations, to determine what enters my body, you are saying, you are saying that that should be disregarded and they must take a vaccine or an injection, which, because these things are not vaccines, take an injection because if they die, then what rights do they have? So your injection is more important than my human right. I would like to think, Frank Anthony, that you should, not, you should dismiss Ram Sami if he's the one who's advising you. I would like to think that you should release from their position anyone who advises you that a vaccine that is issued only for, or a group of vaccines, that would have been issued only for emergency use, under, under, under emergency use authorization, you are saying that my human right is less significant than that vaccine. I am further concerned at the fact that you obviously did not take the time to plan and to rationalize about how far-reaching your decisions could be. Your statement says, and the president, your president said, that everyone should take the vaccine if they're eligible in terms of age because you are now confessing what I said you were, you were doing since last year. I said since last year that you, the PPP Civic, are pushing for herd immunity because you didn't have the vaccine then. So what you intended to do was to leave people to get sick and everything else until about 70 to 80 percent of the population contracted COVID-19 and then the country is stabilized in terms of the curve. I told you that's what you were doing, but you didn't say that that's what you were doing. No, but now you are saying that you want to have herd immunity through vaccination. Now what, 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 you, what you're failing to, to consider is this. 
or you may have you may have considered it but your advisor told you not to not to do it or you have no advisor with the common sense to tell you what you shouldn't do are you aware that if you issue an order that states that to enter any government building you must have been fully vaccinated are you aware are you aware that for the old people the pensioners in Guyana to receive their old age pension they have to go in most instances to the post office the post office around this country is a post office considered a public office is it if the post offices around Guyana are considered public offices are you telling me mr. Frank Anthony that an 85 9 or 90 year old guy and he's male or female a 75 year old who may have diabetes I know of one one concerns me are you telling me that someone who may have a heart condition are you saying to me in your generalized statements mr irfan ali that you said every guy you should take the vaccine so are you saying to me that my that somebody's grandmother or mother who has to go to the post office to receive a pension they must be fully vaccinated when the manufacturers of the vaccine when the world health organization said that persons who will have or likely have an adverse reaction or has an, a pre-existing condition in terms of their health they should not even consider taking the vaccine or they should strongly consider what they should do so person old people senior citizens who should be the, the 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 gems of your society who are the diadems of your society you telling these people that they that they must take a vaccine at all costs to go for the pension or they must present a pcr test so the the old age pension that you give to people if the if the if these mothers and these these grandmothers great grandmothers have to go to take a pcr test to go for the pension and they must do so two or three times a week or twice a month are you aware or three times a month or whatever it is are you aware that when they when they finish paying for the PCR test if they have nobody to take care of them that, that the pension is just about finished now I should inform you further if just in case GTT or Digicel fails me tomorrow while I'm speaking because I will, I will stand at the screen of the revolution tomorrow and I shall stream live from my phone to speak to you this is my private protest I'm doing or my, my individual right I'm exercising here to stand on Facebook and speak from the screen of the revolution as a symbol of my support for the Guyana police force for the nurses for all of the public servants and private sector employees who are being discriminated against by you and based on your edict i am saying here that i am going on the square of the revolution to stand in solidarity actually to stand in grief for my for my fellow guyanese who serve in the police force who are being who would have to be used probably by you to arrest me or arrest whoever it is or whatever, or whatever you want to do for speaking on for their right I'm speaking for them I'm standing to stream tomorrow so that wherever they are in, in the country they can hear somebody saying in public in fa on Facebook because I want to be in the open when I'm saying this Shalom brother e. I'm not asking anybody to join me I've never asked anybody to join me anywhere and there's no record including this one that you can use to say that I asked somebody to join me I am going to stand on my own as an individual which is my right 
in a public setting, which is my right. And I'm coming close enough to the minister of the presidency, so if the president wants to leave his office or invite me to his office to have a conversation, I'm willing to do so as well. Or you can speak to people, whatever you want to do. But have you considered that old age pensioners are also people you have put, put on the line here to say that they have to be vaccinated or they cannot readily walk into post office to get 20,000 or 22,000 whatever it is? What's the old age pensioner for the government? Somebody please tell me. What is the government's old age pension? I know it was increased, probably 24,000 or something like that. But give it to me please. Are you telling me this? That I'm supposed to stand here and, and be quiet? When I said to you, one of these people concern me? Are you telling me that I must stand here and, 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 and accept you, your saying? Okay, somebody said 25,000. That an, an old age pensioner in this country, if they want to visit the post office to collect the pension, that's $20,000 PCR test because the, the, the heart may be bad and they can't take a, 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 the vaccine. So after that, they have to go to, maybe they want to visit NIS. They have to find another $20,000 if they want to visit NIS next week. That's $40,000 on average to do piece, two PCR tests because you say it must be 72 hours, within 72 hours. So every, whenever an old age pensioner wants to visit one of your government agencies, that person has to find, if they don't take a vaccine, $20,000 when your pension to them is $25,000. Does it make sense to you people? It cannot make sense to you. This is why I am compelled to step to the front, if I have to, to cause certain laws in this country to be probably amended to prevent any government official from doing this again. This must be as long as I'm living and I have an opportunity to serve this country in a public capacity in government. This must be the last time that anyone in this country does this to Guyanese. The last time. And I hope that if I die, some Guyanese would arise and ensure that you would never do this to them again ever in the future of this country. You have not considered the extent to which you can affect people. And I'm using the old age pensioners here because probably you reconsider given what they would have to go through. If an old age pensioner has to renew their passport, but they, they got the pension yesterday, they have to renew the passport next week. Are you telling me that a person has to find another $20,000 plus to do a PCR test just to appease you? I'm saying if they have some condition that is pre-existing. What about a younger person who has got diabetes? A younger person who has got a, cardio, a, cardio, a cardiac issue with their heart? What about them? What about somebody who has a, a, a respiratory issue? A compromised respiratory system and the likelihood exists that if there is an escape as they're discovering now in, in many cases of the virus through their immune system they can die or they can become severely ill are you telling me that this is acceptable to you you are not even saying that you are offering persons the opportunity to visit the various public uh, uh, departments to have their physical test done to determine whether they have an underlying condition because you do not have the capacity to do so. Your healthcare system cannot even run a proper holistic test without having a five hour line. You have not offered to test and I'm going to present to my Guyanese brothers and sisters tonight what the, because I may not be able to do it tomorrow Let me offer you tonight the information 
the World Health Organization, not the Pacific Organization, the World Health Organization has said in a caveat, meaning they have warned countries around the world, while you are developing these vaccines or you're going to administer them to your people, they said, as long as you mention mandatory vaccination, and Mr. President, that's the term. It's not mandatory. It is mandatory. As long as you have got mandatory vaccinations, the World Health Organization said that you as a government must go through certain steps. They actually said the same people who were involved in saying that vaccines are good, the vaccines are going to help in, 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 in such cases. Listen to me. The same people who said it have said to all nations around the world, Guyana being one of them, that they do not advise any government across the world to push the agenda of mandatory vaccination unless it is extremely necessary meaning that the rate of death is so high they said it they said it must be a case of morbidity mr frank anthony mr frank anthony the government the world health organization said that it must be first of all considered as to whether the disease is has such a high morbidity rate that the only way to keep your citizens alive would be vaccination. That is not the case with COVID-19. A high morbidity rate, Mr. Frank Anthony, cannot be 94 or 95% recovery rate. And a 0.1 or 1% death rate. That is not high morbidity. The World Health Organization said that if persons in your population have got any inkling to become ill, you must give those people absolute priority in considering mandatory vaccination, which means everybody must get it. The World Health Organization further states, Dr. Frank Anthony, and I call you doctor now because what I'm about to say to you, Dr. Frank Anthony, the same World Health Organization who endorsed some of these vaccines would have said that if ever the vaccine is for emergency use author only, listen to me, the world, I'm calling you doctor for a reason now, Dr. Frank Anthony, the World Health Organization said that if the vaccines are for emergency use, you are discouraged from, from mandatorily telling people, making it mandatory, because there is an issue with liability. I have told you all that from, from, my, from May. From the first time you brought it here, I told you we have to address liability. Now, since you're a doctor, according to what they call you, I expect you to understand what that means. Because the World Health Organization would have said that for as long as there is an emergency use authorization and you want to make it mandatory for every citizen of age to receive it, this is what you all want to deal with that I will continue to speak to because I've been saying it to you forever. And I'm saying to you with all humility here, with all of my heart and with with every fiber of genuineness within me. I do not have a personal issue with anyone even from the PPP Civic. I have an issue with how you're treating your people. You don't have to pay me what you pay Ramsami. I'm prepared to sit with you off the record and have a conversation with you off the record. Nobody would have to know what I told you. In the hope that you can at least hear from an outsider what the facts are. And tell me to my face that you prepare to disregard them. And I promise you as a man that I walk out of your office knowing who you are. Anyone of you all in the PPP Civic 
I'm prepared to sit with you face to face, man to man, man to woman, not, nothing in between that. Because I don't do sodomite stuff. Because you do not seem to understand that if there is any reaction from the population, all of us are affected. Ghana should not sink to a place again in which our police officers are made to injure their fellow Guyanese because of you. I therefore return to what I'm saying to you, Mr. Frank Anthony, that the world, and for now it's president, the World Health Organization, in an edict said to every nation who is going to issue vaccines to people, vaccines to people, that for as long as the vaccines have not been fully approved and they are not transitioned or, or upgraded to full authorization they said that you should not force your citizens to take it unless you can firstly educate the citizens and engage them in a manner that would convince them that their lives depended on a vaccine they said that in order to convince us, the citizens, that our lives depended on this, you must present to us the facts about morbidity. Not fear. Not what you think. Not how much money you spent, because you never spent a dollar. You spent our money. We are the ones who buy the vaccine, not you. You manage the purchase. You oversee the purchase. You haven't spent a dollar for it. We spend the money as taxpayers. And you pay taxes too, I hope. Some of y'all don't. So the World Health Organization, organization would have said that you should make morbidity the priority if you have to seek mandatory vaccination. I further state to you, sir, that the World Health Organization issued a, a, a major caveat that I spoke to you all about for two months, almost, for almost a year, actually. And then when the vaccines came, I spoke even louder. And then for the past few days, I've been speaking even louder. The World Health Organization would have said to all nations, and you should know this, because Ram Sami is your advisor, so I guess you should know it too. They said that for as long as the vaccines are for emergency use, and you want to make it mandatory, they said that you must have, you must, you should by all means have your population know, to know, that if anything happens to them, I told you that, that within the realm of your nation, this not, is this not Pfizer here, this is not a, a BioNTech. This is not Johnson & Johnson. This is not Oxford with AstraZeneca. This is not Sputnik and Russia. This is you. If you as a nation make a decision as a leader to make it mandatory, they said that you must have in place some form of compensation or insurance in case something goes wrong with one of these emergency use vaccines. Man, listen here. Listen to me. If, the, if you want to say that you follow the World Health Organization's advice that vaccines will save you from dying, why can't you follow that aspect of their advice? That if you want to make it mandatory, then I keep telling you that. You should issue to all of us some assurance that if something goes wrong with you, we shall be fully responsible. And you shall be compensated. You say that you cannot be held liable for it. But it's still mandatory. So, this, so you as a PPP civic government intend to just bypass, like you did with, with the Constitution, our elections. You bypass what you don't like. And you just cherry pick at what, what, what you like. Is that how you're going to run this country? So the things that you don't agree with, you just, you just ignore them?
I have been saying to you that if you are not going to cause yourself to be held accountable for what happens to me if I'm vaccinated, then give me the right to choose. Give the police officers a right to choose. Give the, the soldiers a right to choose. Give the nurses a right to choose because they're educated in this field. Give yourself a right to choose. I haven't taken this from you. I'm just here to present to you and the citizenry what the facts are from the World Health Organization. And they said plainly that if you are going to have an emergency use, and that's what some of you all understand, measles, mumps, rubella are not emergency use vaccines. So they could be issued to children. They have been cleared and thoroughly investigated. The vaccines you're presenting to us, well, Sputnik is not released for anything in, in, in the FDA. But the people who are responsible for my health, who you say you took advice, some of you following the, the, the global trends, are advising you that if you are going to have the need to tell your citizens that they must all be vaccinated, then you must have for their assurance in your country some form some form of insurance some form of compensation some form of having them understand that we know this is an emergency use vaccine it is it has not passed the rigors of certain uh, 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 testing to have to be fully authorized for use as would be the measles and chicken pox and smallpox and dengue fever and yellow fever vaccines the people told you all that it is written it is written mr frank anthony and you have the nerve to tell a nurse that he or she must be vaccinated with something that's only for emergency use are you not liable for what happens to them and if they don't want that vaccine they must go and pay for it for pcr tests that you would not have the same nurses who work at your health centers to do these tests at your testing facilities you telling them they must not test themselves because the, the taxpayers can't afford to, afford to pay them I further state, since I am now convinced that you do not know what the World Health, Health Organization said. They also said, Mr. Frank Anthony, that there are about six or seven steps to follow. And I'll, I'll highlight a few, for, a few for your sake. If you're going to issue any vaccine to anybody under the COVID-19 emergency use authorization, the CDC has advised you all in the USA, and apparently you have dropped on the USA bandwagon, whatever you do. You're hopping all across the world. So whoever agrees with your agenda, you, you adopt their principle. But I'm going to tell you what, we're, we're, we're those who authorize the vaccine, the FDA, and so on, what they said. They said that you should go through, and the World Health Organization said this, you should go through certain steps before you inject an individual and after. This would, I hope, interest my Guyanese brothers and sisters and give you cause to individually, individually, and independently stand publicly against this. And to stand in support of your police officers, of your soldiers who protect your nation, your nurses who protect you in terms of your health, and offer services to doctors, the private sector employees who, who, who provide services to you, stand in defense of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the speedboat operators and everything else. Stand in their defense. Once I say what I have to say to you right now, The people said that you must first have a conversation with an individual to ascertain whether they may have any allergic reaction to any component of the vaccines. You do not do that because your doctor in a high capacity told me they don't have the means to test people to that extent. So all you would do is ask somebody, do you, have, you, have you been allergic to anything? No. Okay, all right, come take a shot. You haven't told them what the vaccine contains. So they do not know what they're allergic to. Do you get that yet? They said that before you even inject an individual, you must have a conversation with them to inform them as to what the contents are 
so that they would know whether they have any allergic reaction, potential, especially if they're allergic to certain vaccines. That is what the people said. Step one. They never said, say, everybody gets a vaccine or you live. And you live. You won't get sick. They didn't say it's easier to take a vaccine. Like you said, Frank Anthony, the vaccines are cheaper, so take the vaccine. Don't stress us out over testing you in our test centers. They didn't say that. They said that you must have. If finally, they didn't say that those who are unvaccinated are worse than the virus itself. They said that you should have a conversation. You hear that? And in the conversation, you should ascertain whether this person can potentially be harmed by any chemical or any agent found in the vaccine. That's what they said. That's step one. Step two is that, or I will bypass a few steps, but the second thing that is important is this. Once you inject the person then, because you should screen them to see whether they have asthma or whatever it is. Okay, you, you bypass all that. Once you inject this person with this vaccine, they said for 15 minutes to half an hour, you must observe the person. Watch this. Watch this carefully here. Why? Because it is for emergency use. You observe the person, they said, to see if there is any adverse reaction. The, 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 the tongue begin to feel heavy. Uh, the eyes start dropping. They feel as if their heart is racing. The people said that you must observe anyone that you give this vaccine to for 15 to 20 minutes or half an hour. Why? Why? Because they know that something can happen. You all had people at the drive through vaccine, take a vaccine, drive off. You did that. You people did that at your drive through campaign. Person could go and take a shot and just drive off in the car. And you, were, you had the nerve to advertise that in the news as if you did something so great when you were in, when you were in total violation to what the, you said that you, you rely on the experts from overseas and you're going by their guidelines. You have the nerve to publish that you just giving somebody a shot in the drive off when the people told you all, don't let the people move because this is something that's new. Emergency use, new vaccine. We don't know what's going to happen, so hold on. Don't rush, don't move yet. Let, although you told me you don't, have, you don't have allergies, although you told me that you may not have any underlying condition, although you said you feel strong and fit, we still have to sit and observe you for at least 30 minutes before you move because we don't know what's going to happen. That's what they said. You know why? Because they don't know what's going to happen. Do you get that yet? Because we haven't got to the last stage, which is the most important one. Do you get that yet, Mr. Anthony? Do you understand what they said to you? That you don't just give somebody a shot and say, thank you for taking the vaccine. And as in Linda and y'all had the nerve to be so disrespectful as they take a plate of food. Well, I was, I was waiting for one of y'all cross my path with that foolishness. You, you, you tourism comedian, wherever you were. Next, they said, that you must inform the person as well of the potential side effects. Minor. You, you, you would feel because of your body is now producing antibodies or reacting to it, your temperature will rise because there's an increased blood flow and a reaction in your system and you must monitor that. Look at this, what they said here though. Because they really must, for the sake of time, get to the main one for you. They said that in the case of these emergency use vaccines, emergency use authorization situations, they said that you as the government, as the caregivers, and I want you all to hear me and take my time with this one, you should after all of that receive from the person feedback as to how they are doing after they were vaccinated. And you must keep the data. Why? Now I'll deal with you all to show you how wicked you are in reference to the law. They know that this is for emergency use and so they are gathering information from around the world as to how persons react to this before they make it fully authorized. Do you get that? 
in order for them to get the full information about the, the, the global population's response, because I said they know that, for example, an Asian may be affected differently from an African. They don't know how your ethnicity could affect you because you have different genetic codings. They said that you must, after vaccination, gather data from the population as to what is happening with them. That is called an experiment. Now, Mr. Frank Anthony, at least I would expect you, if you're a vet, a, 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 a botanist, whatever you got your PhD, your doctorate in, if you got it, whatever it is, the least I think you're able to do is to understand what experimentation is. In an experiment, you have the, the you, you, you do the test, and then you have what is called observation, analysis, and reporting. Observation. You test, you observe, you analyze, and you report. If you don't know this, go back to C-Sex Science class. It'll help you. Do some SBAs. Because in SBA, they do, they do this. pre child, maybe you can help him. Hopefully. You test. Then you observe what is, what is happening. I'm not going to do the hypothesis and all that yet. Because it may be too deep for some of you in, in, in your facility. So I'm going down, down to grassroots to the bottom part. Once you test the person, you observe what happened to them. Then you report what happens to them. Now, sir, the fact that the, that the World Health Organization and the CDC said that once the people are, in, are vaccinated with this or these emergency use authorized vaccines, you must observe and collect data from the people. It is because they know they said it. They have to get feedback about the vaccine on a massive scale before they can authorize it to be used fully. You in Guyana have the nerve at the PPP level to ignore this and behave as though this is not an experiment any longer because you are, author no, you are not authorized to tell the manufacturer how effective vaccines are. You that crazy? Are you people that serious? Are you that serious? Where are you going to have this information available to everybody online? On the website for the World Health Organization, for the CDC in the US, the Center for Disease Control. You have this, this is a guideline these people give to you all. If you want to use these vaccines, follow these strict guidelines. These steps, step one, in, 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 have an, a, a conversation. Investigate. Find out if the person is allergic to anything. Find out what is the potential harm that could be had to them then tell them that this vaccine contains certain things are you allergic to any one of these no okay but we still we, we believe you but we don't believe you so we're going to inject you with it and then observe if you're allergic to it and we have a facility in place to immediately take care of you if you have an adverse reaction you you got the nerve to tell your public servants the nerve to tell your nurses that they must take a vaccine regardless of what happens or they must go home if they fail to present to you at their cost a negative PCR test every three days or whatever it is? The World Health Organization bypassed them. The Federal Department of Drug Administration of the USA that you're all following as well have said that when they get enough long-term information about the safety, then they intend to say that these vaccines, as they call them, are now going to be approved or upgraded from emergency use. You are stuck at an emergency use phase and you are seeking to force this on people to force this on my police brothers and sisters, to force this on, on superintendents in the police force, probably on the, on the commission of the police force, to force this on, 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 on civilians, to force this on, on the military, force this on, on, on the army. Is this what you intend to do? When you were advised that education is the best option as opposed to forcing, 
when you were advised by the manufacture by, by the by the health organizations of the world that you should at least do everything in your power to educate not mandate Whenever I wake up, whenever I awake, I awake with the hope that I will see in the news that you did something sensible and that you've retracted your statements and you've reconsidered the extent to which you're affecting the society. The sad reality is that I'm disappointed whenever I awake because you just get worse. I must hasten to address those of you who seem to not have the understanding of how prophecy works and how people function in relation to prophecy. There are some of you who are so religious in your outlook that you say the Bible says this will happen. Okay, so leave it alone in essence. The scriptures never said that in the last days when the, trouble when the troubling time comes that we must be quiet. That's when you're the loudest. And some of you are too shallow to understand that I'm addressing the church ones now. The, the holy ones who, who think that, oh, the Bible say that prophecy must be fulfilled. And so what? You go quiet? Is that what it said? In case you do not know, Yeshua told his disciples before he left them, he said, listen to me. I told you put your sword away. But now those of you got money, go and buy a sword. Why he said that? And I will call you stupid for a reason now. I wouldn't normally do it, but I call you stupid for this reason right here. Because you like to present scriptures to me without having understanding of it because you want to silence my speech. And I'll deal with you accordingly. When the scriptures speak to prophetic things that will happen, it does not say that the church goes quietly into hiding. That's when the church should be loudest. If you don't understand how light functions, when things are darkest, light is most visible. But you clowns, are hiding behind the Bible because you're scared of people. Oh, the prophecy must be fulfilled. So what do you do then? You roll over and die? When you see wickedness being fulfilled, you're supposed to have enough mouth to talk about it. Not says prophecy. It's opportunity for you to talk. Prophecy being fulfilled has not been an instruction for the church to be silent. In case you do not know, since some of you want to quote Revelation to me, in Revelation, when there is the two, when there are two prophets who came to speak, what did the Bible say? That when they are preaching, why are they preaching? That's prophecy. Prophecy said they'll come back. And they, these two men will be in the, in the streets preaching. Watch this. In the most wicked age, they'll be coming to preach. Why are they talking? Why didn't, why didn't Yahweh say, hey, prophecy being fulfilled, so leave them alone. After all, the men are just wicked, just leave them. No. He is sending persons to speak in the midst of the wickedness. Watch this. Then he said, they'll call fire from heaven to deal with certain wicked people. Oh, I thought that according to your religious bats, when prophecy is being fulfilled, you just shut up. When the scripture says... That the two prophets, they will call fire from heaven to deal with these people. Of course, they'll be slaughtered. Why? Because prophecy being fulfilled, or prophecy being fulfilled before your eyes, is an opportunity for you to react to what you see. Can you? If you're afraid, just say so. But don't seek to, do not bring your religious nonsense to me to seek to make me go quiet. If you are afraid, be afraid. Stay in your house. But do not seek to throw this prophecy fulfilled nonsense to me as if you don't have anything to do about it. I have something to do about it. And as I said to you, and I will have the meetings that I have to have before I really officially do whatever I'm, what I'm doing. I will, because of what I've seen in, in this country, I shall 
based on what I am released to do as well, I shall seek to deal with the PPP Civic and APNU AFC and all y'all in the same government system that you find yourselves. I'm not talking from the outside anymore. Hopefully, Yahweh keeps me alive long enough to have an opportunity to deal with you from an, a position of political authority. Because you are doing too much. You've gone too far with this right now. I commend Apneyasi for the reaction on Wednesday. They went to the street. Good. You went to Square Revolution. But I say to you that if you observe what happens around the world or what is happening around the world, it is not a political party that is causing the reaction to, the, to this draconian dictatorial behavior. It's the people. Understand that. Around the world, it is not the weak politicians who are reacting to mandatory vaccination. It is the people. I told you all, if every police officer walks out to the station tomorrow or the next day, what can you do to them? What can you do to every soldier who walks out of Camp Ayagan or every camp in Ghana? Say, listen, you all do this to me, I had, I'm not taking this. I'm leaving until you, you, you treat me right. If every nurse should walk out of the hospital, do you know what happens to patients? If every control tower operator or, or person at the airport should walk off the job tomorrow and say, listen, we've had enough of your bullying. You have stretched us so far that we ain't taking this. If every businessman says, I'm going to close my door, do you know what happens in this country? If every person who is affected by this in a genuine way and understand the basic human rights of all Guyanese that's being trampled upon by you, do you understand what happens in this country? But I say to you, my, my police officers, I will encounter you a lot in the future because of what I have to do. Not because I'm going to break the law, but because I know the system that governs your behavior. I'm saying to you all, police officers, that if I am standing in the public with a placard that says, I stand for you, I'm speaking about you. I'm going to stand at this time until I have the opportunity to stand, if Yahweh wills in an office to defend my people in a better way. I'm going to stand. And if as a police officer, as my fellow countrymen, you have to come to arrest me because somebody up the ladder told you come to arrest this man, I would look you in the eye, my brother, or my fellow Guyanese, and I would not resist your arresting me because I would never fight you since I understand why you're doing what you're doing. And some of you on Facebook will not understand what I just said to you. But I'm not going to make this about my fighting the Ghana police force when it is beyond them. Arrest me if you have to. But your arresting me would be your arresting me knowing that I am doing this for you. Transport me around the country as you, as may, you may be instructed to do. Move him from this station. Put him here to frustrate my family. Move him to this place. Move him to that place. Do whatever you have to do. But when you're doing it, I want you to know that whatever you're doing to me, you would be doing it knowing that I'm standing for you. I am not going to fight you. Mr. Commissioner of Police, Mr. Crime Chief, all in your capacity, I am doing this for you all. Because you, I understand that you are not able as officers to stand in the street and protest against the government. I understand that. Although you have the right to do so, I know you wouldn't do it. Because you don't want to lose control of the population. I understand that. And I don't know if in the future it may happen because of excessive pressure. Is, I don't know what it is. I don't know what the future holds for Guyana. But I'm telling you, as a man, I am not going to make you my enemy. I'm not going to do it. I'll tell you what I will do. I pray that I have a chance to live long enough 
to be free to serve you in the future so that you'll never have to do this to your countrymen again. That's what I'll do. I pray that I have the life within me or somebody else comes after me if they have to that will never make you have to compromise your conviction like this again. I'm not asking you to treat me good. I'm not asking you to give some special treatment if they, if they take to arrest me. I'm not asking you to make me some special prisoner to you. No. I want you to understand what I'm doing. That if you have, if you sent to arrest me, I will understand that it didn't come from you. But if you're strong enough, my police brothers and sisters, if you have the courage within you to say that we cannot arrest somebody who is expressing himself freely because the law doesn't permit you to arrest me for freedom of expression. If you have that kind of courage and you say tomorrow I'm not going to do this, I applaud your courage. But I would never disrespect you because you're weak. This is bigger than you. If it comes down to the army having to be called out in the street, soldiers, this is for you. Because they've taken some of you out of your school, they sent you home. They've, they, they may cut your salary. They tell you have to, it's being cut anyway, they say you have to provide the test with your expense, by, through your expense. So I understand. I am not going to fight you all. And I would not encourage any citizen in this country to make you the focus, because you're not the focus. It is my hope. It is my sincere hope that you police officers who are on duty tomorrow can understand that I am going out there by myself in my own capacity. I cannot control who wants to come and who doesn't want to come. I am going out there tomorrow to stand for you. Because I understand that the day will come in Guyana when somebody has to give an account for what they made you do. If I'm that person, you may have to turn on and ask me to be merciful to the people who made you do what you're doing. But I'm not going to make it my issue. I'm not going to have some, some, some altercation with the police officers and there's a big war and people want to fight police. I'm not, I'm, I'm not a part of that. I'm not doing it because I understand what this government would like to see or would enjoy seeing. It's not going to happen. You have a conscience as an officer. And there's no law in Guyana that says you must comply with what is unlawful. Just know that. The freedom to assemble is lawful. On the COVID-19 situation, then we have to seek permission from the task force. I'm not assembling as a group with anybody. I'm standing by myself in my own capacity as a grown man, exercising my right to speak. If that is illegal and that is wrong, Mr. Commissioner of Police, Mr. Crime Chief, I'd advise you to arrest me now, please. Because I'm not going to allow my right to speak to be taken from me. That is one right you'll never take away from me. But in case I don't get a chance to say this tomorrow, I'm saying it to you now. You, as the police officers, will never be made my enemy. Now, if you seek to infringe on my human right, I'll inform you that you're doing so. But I'm not going to make you my enemy. I remember when an element and a support of the PPP Civic in Ashman Building threatened two young police officers, threatened their bread and butter, as you call it, threatened their future, and told Irfan Ali that when he gets in, these two must lose their job. I don't forget that. I'm standing for you. I'm standing for those of you who have been victims of this, this, this dictatorial nature of this, these people. You are the ones I'm standing up for. And if you believe that I deserve to be arrested by you because somebody above you told you to do it, then so be it. But I know that you live with your conscience after you do what you did. I am not afraid of you. 
I am grieving for what you've been what you've been put into. That's what hurts me. To know that when you privately told your superiors in some cases, but I, I really, sir, I can't take this vaccine. I'm not sure about this vaccine. And you were told, do it or you have to go home. Do it or you have to leave college. Do it or I would not promote you. You the person that I grieve for because I understand what you're going through. I call with the last degree of will that I have within me to engage you people, civic people in this manner, I call on you, Frank Anthony, to revisit. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, sir. I call on you to revisit what you are doing to the people of Guyana. You have not thought this process through. I'm not even, I haven't even touched extensively on the fact that in case this person have contacted me, and I know it, that they took the vaccine in May or in June and you do not have the second dose, but you're requesting full vaccination cards. How, how do you do that? How do, how do you do that? How do you do, how do you tell me I must be fully vaccinated when I took the first dose? I'm talking about on somebody's behalf. How do you tell somebody, listen, take the, the vaccine. They took it. When they show up for the second dose, you don't have it. They show up again for the, you don't have it. So now the people told you within a certain time frame, they must, be, they must have both doses. They don't have it. I don't have enough of it. But the same people are being denied entry into, into, into certain places. Is that fair, Mr. Frank Anthony? I understand what happened to you. You got scared when you heard of the Delta variant because you were playing around all along. You didn't, didn't take me seriously into what, what, what was coming away. But now you realize, based on what is being said, that a Delta variant is about to hit you. And more so, you spend a lot of money on these vaccines. And you're scared now because the money has been spent. The vaccines have a shelf life. With AstraZeneca, the two, you can't keep it on the shelf for, for more than a month, I think it is. So you have to force it on people's throat. Let's tell the people the truth. In closing, I present to you what I have said repeatedly that has bypassed the ears of the simple minded. I have never told anyone they must not be vaccinated. I've never said that. I said that it should be a choice. Thank you so much, my father. Thank you, daddy. You hear what I said? I have never, Mr. Frank Anthony, Irfan Ali, and all y'all, hear what I'm saying to you. I have never told people they must not be vaccinated. I said that it, according to the World Health Organization, if you're not going to stand full responsibility for what happens to the person, you have to give them the choice. That's all I said to you. Is that too hard to comprehend? Does it sound as if I told you people must not be vaccinated? Or I'm saying to you, give the people the right to choose because according to the human rights law that you signed, the covenant that you signed, you swore that you will not, well, not you, but Guyana signed. We would never, never force our people to be parts of medical experiments. The World Health Organization has labeled these vaccines an experiment in the context that you're getting data from it to know how it reacts in people. Stick by your covenant. That's what I'm saying to you. Honor your covenant with your people. Don't do this to them. Have you considered, have you considered that people have to go to Western Union, MoneyGram, and those places to receive money some, because, you, because they don't have jobs to sustain their families? And if they don't have full vaccination, you deny them with the right to eat? Is that how you care? Is that the caring government we're talking about here? You be care because we care crew? Is that how you function? Guyana, no discrimination, no harassment. No harassment, no discrimination. No harassment, no discrimination. Frank Anthony stood 
as a minister of health who should be the most compassionate minister and was dismissive, bigoted, and outright asinine in his, in his commentary because he doesn't care about you. At least his expression didn't speak to that. I didn't feel it from him. It is do what I say or else. Well, you're talking to the wrong man here. You are addressing the wrong person with that, uh, with that approach. No harassment, no discrimination. It is our body, we choose. I stand with you police officers. I stand with you nurses. I stand with every doctor in this country. I stand with every teacher. I stand with every CEO. I stand with every education supervisor. I stand with every person in the public sector who would be faced with this draconian, dictatorial, callous government's behavior. I stand with you. We are not going to make the police our enemy. I know who my enemy is. As the people, we have the authority, we have the authority to stand in this nation for what we believe is our right. Do not lose it. All across Guyana, in Babis, where you are, Gaisuko workers, whoever you are, stand, stand for your human rights. If you lose your human rights, you lose the right to be human in the eyes of these people. They'll do you anything. Tomorrow at 9 a.m. I shall be standing, Yahweh willing, at the square of the revolution. Now if the police put up a barricade and block me and say I have no right to stand there as an individual, I am not going to fight you. I am telling you this, don't waste your time. Because I'm not going to come to fight you. I'm coming to speak for you. And for my right as a human being to protest peacefully. 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 I am not going to involve myself in any, fear, any, any, any uh, uh, fighting with you all. I am not going to hurl insults at police officers. Because it is not them. If you refuse to stand for your human right you lose the right to be human. That's what they'll do to you. I promise you, that's what these people going, they're going to do to you. They already don't see some of us as human anyway. The last right you have should have been the first one, which is your human right. No harassment, no discrimination. If you're from APNU AFC, if you're from the PPP Civic, I'm asking you to stand against this. This is not party politics. This is not campaign time. This is your time to stand for what you, you're convicted about. Let this generation of young children see that the hope of defending yourself for what is right is not lost in Guyana. I thank you for your time. And I appreciate the moments you spent with me. I am grateful that my father would have been willing to speak publicly of his support for me. I'm grateful to say to you that my father and my mother, especially my father, has given me his blessing, has given me the encouragement to seek to work for the betterment of the people in Guyana, including the saints. Because my prayer is that we must have, have a quiet and peaceable life. I promised you that I will do my part, which is to stand for your right. That's all I could do.
you will never hear me asking you to vote for me. Never would you hear those words come out of my mouth. Never. I present to you what my mind or my thoughts are and my desires would be to see Guyana be in a certain position and you decide what you do about it. I'm not going in any place asking you, please vote for me, vote for me. I, I don't play that game. I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm going to present to you what is in my heart. As I said some of the things tonight, that you would never have a police force under my watch who would experience this again. You never have a minister of health who will ever do this again because this one will have to give an account for what he did. You will never experience this again in your life if you have leaders who care about you enough. This is not a vote for me business here. This is, I'm telling you what will be presented to you and you have the right to decide if it's acceptable. But what I see our police officers experience, what I'm seeing our teachers about to experience, what I see the nurses experience, I am never going to be quiet. I will give it a chance to see if I can represent you. If I fail, then at least I give it a chance. I'm not abandoning the saints. I'll never stop preaching. But I will never stop speaking about your right either. Because Yahweh believes in justice and righteousness. That's what scripture says. Yahweh loves righteousness. Just understand that. And I love it too. I'll give you further information. As time progresses and as I speak to my brothers and sons and daughters in the faith. Because if they're comfortable with this, then I shall proceed. If they're not, I'll give it a, a reconsider. Because they matter most to me. A lot to me. But what I'm seeing happening to you, my people, you, my fellow Guyanese, even the saints are suffering because of this decision. And that is what has, is compelling me. Because you're touching the saints. You're touching the poor and the needy. You're touching the old age pensioners. Once you begin to touch certain class of people in this world, you get a reaction from me of this nature. Which is I'm prepared to come in your house of assembly or in the office of president, whatever, wherever I have to be, to deal with you from that position. Because you're not going to do this again in the history of this country. You'll be made an example unless you change your mind. Thank you all so much. I appreciate and I love you all saints. Fellow Guyanese, I thank you for those of you who are supporting the, with understanding. And I reiterate, I have never said that you must not be vaccinated. I am saying that it is your right to decide whether you should be. Simple. I look forward to streaming live tomorrow from the Square of the Revolution. With my speaking to you, those of you who are, not, who, are, who are in your offices, wherever you are, I'll speak to you from that position as a symbol, as a symbol of protest against what is happening in this country. Not as a place of meeting, as a symbol of protest. Thank you. Until we meet again. Shalom and goodbye.